There's one particular adjustment that I have been using for months now on almost every single photo that I edit. In today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly what that is. Hey everybody, I'm Austin James Jackson, landscape photographer based here in the beautiful Southern Utah area and welcome to my corner of YouTube. I'm excited you're here and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys one of my favorite and most used adjustments to make to my images. Now the adjustment is called a curves adjustment, but I have a little trick that I like to use to make my images look perfect. So if you already know how to use the curves adjustment, you're in the right place. I'm still gonna show you something that you don't know. Now you need to have Photoshop to do this adjustment, but even if you don't have any experience in Adobe's flagship photo editing program, this technique is simple enough that after watching this video, you're gonna have no problem replicating this effect. Now let's not wait any longer. I'm gonna start off by jumping right over into Photoshop. So whether you use Photoshop or not, this technique is pretty easy to apply in my opinion. When you just bring your image into Photoshop, there's a variety of ways to do this depending on how you're editing your photo, but first and foremost, bring your image into Photoshop. Now you can't really do this in Lightroom with the Lightroom tone curve, uh, but there is a couple other photo editors out there, maybe if you use them, uh, that you may be able to do this in, but I'm just gonna show you how to do it in Photoshop and you can replicate it in any other editing software that allows you to fully adjust the tone curve. So I like to go ahead and grab my curves adjustment, which you can find down here where this circle with the slash through it is, and you can select curves. It'll bring the curves layer up. Now you have this graph. Now the way a curves layer works is simple. You can see all of the data here on this graph. This represents the amount of pixels in this lightness range. The further left it is, uh, anything touching the far left side is completely black. Anything touching the far right side is completely white. Anything in between is between uh, total darkness and total lightness. So when we adjust the curve, you'll see we can darken the image or we can brighten the image. The powerful thing about the curve is you can do something like create an S curve, which is what most photographers do. You're going to drag down on the bottom quarter and up on the top quarter. Now you can see that we've created contrast in our scene because essentially we've brightened any pixels above 50%, as you can see here, and we've darkened any pixels below 50% lightness here. So I want to show you guys how I do this certain effect that I'm doing on almost all of my photos to add contrast. So you might think that this scene doesn't really need any more contrast. I actually want to add some, but the problem is when I do this standard S curve to where I would normally do it, probably about right in there, the image gets a little bit too bright up here and a little bit too dark down here. I don't want to lose all of this detail. And so essentially what I want to do here is actually go in and make another adjustment on the curve. You can create as many points as you want on this curve. So what I want to do here is actually go in uh, and drag up this bottom left point and drag down this bottom right point. Essentially what this does, watch the highlights as I drag this super, uh, as I drag this top right point down, watch those highlights in there, see how I'm bringing the brightness of those highlights down. I'm essentially like almost protecting the highlights a little bit. So I like to drag that down um, and you can watch with the output over here on the side as you drag this down usually about 240 to 245 for the highlights is good. Now you can see we're still adding that brightness in there, but we're protecting the highlights. Now what you're really gonna see the difference is when you drag up on the very bottom point. I usually like to have this output number be somewhere between four and 10. You can see if we do it too much, it gives our image this like washed out kind of matte look. So we don't wanna do it too much, but we wanna do it just enough to bring back a little bit of that detail in the shadows there, which I think we've done a really nice job. You can see that even though we've darkened the darkest spots in the image, the absolute darkest spots are actually brighter than they were before we did that. And what that does is it not only lowers the contrast in these shadow areas, which kind of helps us perceive some more depth in our image, um, but it also brings back a lot of this detail over here in the corner, because you can see before I had no detail over here. And now after this adjustment, I have a little bit of detail in here. It's not enough to kind of bring your eye through here, which is fine, but it is enough to add interest to the scene, which is exactly what I wanted. So one last time, here is the before, here is the after. And that simple curves adjustment takes me a matter of 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 or seconds if I'm going a little slow. It's a super easy adjustment to make. There's no reason why you wouldn't want to make it. And I'm doing it on almost every one of my photos. Let me show you another example here. Got this photo here, taken same morning in the Redwoods here. Um, sorry for all the Redwoods examples. I've just got, uh, I just came back from a photo trip out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a curves adjustment once again. 
we are going to do that simple S curve. And on this one, I'm going to go a little bit more aggressive on it. I think I'm going to add a lot more contrast here and I might go back and adjust this. So you can see the simple S curve that most photographers used before and after we're losing so much detail in here and on this tree and we might be blowing out the highlights a little bit. So let's drag down on the highlights on this photo. You're not going to see a huge change, but probably about like that. Now we'll drag up on the shadows, which is where you're going to see most of the change here. I'm going to go 10 points there. Then I'm actually going to go in and adjust this again. So I'm adjusting this point. If you're going to adjust the point, make sure you don't accidentally click like up here and adjust another point because when you start to have more than four points, it does start to get a little bit crazy. You can definitely do it in moderation, but if you accidentally keep creating more points, it will get a little difficult to handle. So make sure you have the, as you can see there, the double arrow when you hover over it so that you can adjust from the point that has already been created. And you can kind of fine tune this exactly where you want. But once again, I think we'll show a before, we'll show an after, before and an after. So I think we've really nicely kind of flattened this tree a little bit, which is fine. I don't need it to be super contrasty. Um, I do want to have a little bit of that detail showing in there. And then I've also managed to brighten the highlights, which kind of help give this image that really nice look and feel. I really like having the bright, the brightest of the brights in my image and then the darkest of the darks. I like having that really large tonality range. I think it helps make your photo look really, really nice. Let's look at one more example here that's not Redwoods. Uh, and on this photo, don't mind the dust spots. There was a lot of splashing water and whatnot. So I do have some dust spots on my lens. But I'm going to go ahead and open up another curves adjustment here. Once again, we're going to create an S curve. And on this particular photo, you're going to notice the one problem that we're going to have is just how dark these rocks get. I don't want these rocks to be totally black and they almost are right now. So when I drag this up, uh, this one, I might want to go to like 14, 11 to 14 points was looking pretty good. You can see, I don't want to go too far because it will make them completely gray and flattened, but 10 points is looking fine. I'm actually going to zoom into the rock here just to toggle this to make sure you can see that's looking pretty good. Um, I've not lost any detail there, but I have kind of flattened those darks. If I bring this up too far, you can see I start to lose detail and it gets a little hazy. I feel like right there is about perfect in terms of bringing the brightness of that really dark spot up, but not doing it too terribly much. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go before and we'll go after before and after. Oh, and of course I'm noticing the highlights are a little hot. I forgot to drag down over here. So I want to bring this down just a hair. Then I want to bring down this point right here again, because I feel like it's coming in a little hot before and after. Nice thing about the curve here is you can adjust it forever. There's literally a trillion different combinations that you could possibly do on the tone curve. It's, it is literally endless what you can do on each photo. So adjust this, this curve here and you will find that there is just so many good combinations. It's going to make your photos look so nice. I'm seriously doing this to just about every single one of my photo edits these days. Thank you so much for checking out this week's video. I seriously do use this curves adjustment trick on nearly every single one of my edits. I think that you should certainly give it a try. Now you can do this at any point in your image edit, so it's super easy to add it to all of your pre-existing photo editing workflows. Now, and if this video was helpful for you, please make sure to leave me a thumbs up and a subscribe to my channel. It helps me to continue to grow, continue to bring you guys stuff that's gonna help you to take better photos. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys next time.